Hey you guys, what's up? Strange here. Um, I'm back and uh hopefully there's a little bit, you know, change of quality with camera and with the camera and stuff. Um, but today I wanted to make a video on Toji Zinnen versus Metal Bat from OPM One Punch Man. Uh before I get right into it though. Uh sorry I've been gone for so long. Uh I think now that makes about a month, if not two months. Uh, went to California, then I start slacking up on the upload speed and stuff, so, uh, I want to start making more content, especially in the new year now, I want to start making more content, and hopefully it's, it's not like one of those situations where you look and you see the videos, and the videos are just like, it's, oh, he wanted to make more content, and there's no other videos that year or something, so hopefully it's not one of those, hopefully I get better, uh, at making these videos for you guys as well, but, if you don't know how my video structure goes, usually uh, I'm just going to go talk about the content that I like and the stuff that I like. My headphones are still in. I forgot about that. That About the content that I like. Uh, I'll put some images here and there and some editing here and there. Um, but mostly, uh, I just talk about stuff that I like. So, um, I start catching up on JJK. Um, I like it. I like it. Uh, I have some problems with it overall, but for the most part, I like it. Uh, I'm going to make a whole video, a whole different video about JJK. Uh, for my trails people that watch me for any of my trail stuff... I will, uh, for like the three of you there are, I will put out the, the rest of the Class 7 videos. Those are coming. Uh, Gaius is next. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, JJK has been great. Uh, so far, my favorite character is Toji, and I wanted to do Toji versus Metal Bat because I like those are my two favorite characters in both of those uh, platforms, and I feel like those matchups work great. Now, I'm going to first start off with... Um, I guess the best way to start with either one of these guys is their strengths and their feats. Um, now, I'm not really too much of a dude to say this dude's calced in at Mach 3 or Mach 400. I know, like, Maki, even back when she was, like, first introduced within the story, she was, like, at Mach 400 speeds because she caught a bullet right in front of her face. And I'm pretty sure that there's somewhere that Gege was like, hey, that's not... No. Uh, he just thought that it would be a cool scene to do. He didn't really take into account like any of the power scaling that would have taken in um taken in from there uh but i want to say that pretty much i think at least narratively now that whatever maki can do toji can do so i know that's kind of a weird thing but so for instance right now maki fights uh sukuna by the way spoilers for any this there is spoilers here I should probably have said that. There is spoilers, but um, Maki fights Sukuna, um, and um, even though Sukuna can't use cursed energy, and even though, or not can't use, but isn't because Megumi's holding him back, I believe in the body. She Maki's going band for band with Sukuna, just like pretty much hand to hand. So if Maki can do it, there to me is no reason, at least physically wise, that Toji wouldn't be able to do the same. So, it seems like even, like, going man for man, like, Toji would be able to go at least hand-to-hand hand -hand combat, if not do more than that, and actually hurt Tsukuna. Um, and so, due to that, I guess, even if we're going to rank Toji anywhere within the verse, I would put him still probably, like, maybe top 5, if not top, at least, he's definitely top 10. Um, I still don't think he's beating Gojo, and I don't, and let's, let's talk about this as well. Gojo, right, even as a teenager is beating Toji, like, without purple, without red or blue, even as a teenager he's beating Toji, it took Toji three days, or to, it took Toji multiple days of planning, as well as Gojo having been fatigued because he hasn't slept in three days, he hasn't slept in three days. It, to Toji's the Mayweather of JJK, essentially. He's not, like, even if he did beat Gojo, he didn't beat Gojo at his best. Like, mind you, I know they were, like, Geto has that one panel where he says, like, we're the strongest. Yeah, Gojo's holding you up, dude, by, like, he's doing all the heavy lifting by a bajillion. Like, you put, like, I'm pretty sure Yuki, or, uh, yeah, Yuki, I think that's her name, um, Black Hole Girl, whatever, I... I'm pretty sure she was stronger than Ghetto at that point. So it's like, y you're not the strong, y you aren't the strongest. Like, I guess, like, it's like saying, I don't know, like, the Lakers 
are pro- like saying the Lakers are the best NBA team. But in the end of the day, it's like LeBron is doing most of the heavy lifting. You take out LeBron, they're not really necessarily a well-spread team. But anyway, that's one of my biggest. Ghetto was never you were dude. You were like I, at that time probably you were still not even like that strong comparative to your other sorcerers. Anyway, um, so Toji's able to take on a Gojo that has been fatigued for three days. He ends up molly whopping him. And in my personal opinion, that should have killed Gojo. There's no way you get sliced from here all the way down from your neck all the way down to your hip and you live. You would have bled out 20 seconds. Tops. Tops. You would have bled out. He was still whooping Gojo's ass while he was bleeding out. There's no way. He has no reverse curse technique. There's no way Gojo should have lived. But anyway, that whatever. It's fine. The story calls for him to live at that point. So if and he even tells Toji that you should have cut off my head. Toji then gets cocky and thinks, yeah, 100%. I can take this dude when he just revitalized himself. He just healed himself completely full. He's good now. Toji then does that and tries to fight him and then gets all of his just what well, I think his right side, wherever, wherever your heart is, like your right side, just completely blown out. He gets blown out completely by Gojo. Completely. There is not one thing, at least in my opinion, that he could have done in a situation other than run away to where he would have won that fight. There's nothing. And now you apply, like, of course you have that, uh, the spear, the spear he has, which can cut through any curse technique. So that cuts through Limitless. Or sorry, not Limitless, Infinity. That cuts through Infinity. So, he, off top, Toji isn't touching Sukuna. He isn't touching Sukuna with curse techniques. He's not touching Gojo. And I would, you know, in my personal opinion, if you take into account Hakari, I still haven't finished the Hakari fight yet. If you take on, and the dude he's fighting. Oh man, I forget his name. But if you take into account those two guys, I think Toji barely gets top five. Barely. But the thing is, with Toji at least, is he like i said he's almost like the mayweather but he's you could take that as like he's like almost like a batman in a sense where if he has proper planning though taking into account his planning he can get a lot farther and this is where planning comes in because metal bat is his if you don't know who metal bat from one punch man is first off go read one punch man uh the web comic version is great uh the art to me at least is very charming if you didn't know, one, the dude who uh, does the story for One Punch Man did a webcomic first before he did a um, manga for it. Uh, his art is not the greatest traditionally at all, but him trying and him actually consistently putting in work, to me, that's charming. I love that artwork. Um, and it's great seeing him ta- seeing his take and seeing him try to do and make this story, although he's not the best artist, but uh, Murata, I think that's the guy's name, who does the manga? Oh my god. Let me go off on a little tangent. Murata top five. Easy when it comes down to the art. Like for uh One Punch Man. I think he's top five art wise. Uh as far as manga goes uh manga goes go. Like Miura from Berserk. Um the dude who drew uh the dude who wrote and uh drawn Berserk or drew Berserk. He's great. Like he's my favorite by far. And then uh the dude who drew Poon Poon. Uh Asiana or Asino? Asano? Um, the dude who did, uh, Poon Poon, uh, Oyasumi Poon Poon, he's, like, my second, but Murad is, like, close to my third, if not the dude who wrote Vagabond, but Murad, anyway, uh, Metal Bat, he, his ability's weird, because his ability technically scales into, like, infinite, it can go for a very, very, very long time, the thing is, though, although technically it can be infinite, if, you one shot metal bat just so hard like if for instance goku right goku comes in punches metal bat right in the chest full force metal bat isn't going to get infinitely stronger from that he's not going to get goku strength from that punch he metal bats he's laid out however if the disparity the 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 range of the two are close enough for instance if two metal bats were to fight each other they would just be it would now that would go infinite infinitely because it would just be them keep on getting stronger and stronger and stronger now here's the thing where i think with metal bats feats um now a lot of the feats and now i i realize that a lot of the feats that metal bat has 
Like, for instance, um, it was stated that if Metal Bat hit Garo with that baseball bat, uh, Garo was, for the most part, he was whooping on Metal Bat, but Metal Bat almost landed one shot before his little sister stopped him. That one shot alone, one shot would have killed Garo. One. To me, personally, Garo is already, and that's why I want to kind of make a part two. I want to make a part two. I want to do Toji versus Garo, or Mach, uh, Maki versus Garo would be cooler. <coughs> Sorry, I'm sick. But I want to wait Maki versus Garo, because I think that would be really cool to do. Uh, or Toji versus Garo, either one. Uh, let me know which one you guys want to see. If you, uh, what's it called? If you want to see that at all. But with Maki, or with uh, Metal Bat versus Garo, or sorry, Metal Bat versus Toji. Here's a scenario I see playing out right now. Because Metal Bat, for the most part, other than Garo, I don't think Metal Bat has really gone against another like human 1v1 or anything. Now, if Saitama knew about Metal Bat's ability, Saitama's whole thing with like him fighting until he finds a good, worthy opponent, and him fighting not to be bored... Or at least fighting a villain not to be bored. I don't know what Saitama's full motivations are. If he knew Metal Bat's ability, that could be solved very, very quickly. Like, it might take days, honestly, truth be told, with how strong Saitama is. But if Saitama just holds back tremendously, like a lot, and I don't know. And, you know, he's, he's capable of holding back. He was holding back against Boros. So if he holds back a lot, and fights Metal Bat. Hypothetically, eventually, Metal Bat will get to Saitama's level. To where Saitama has to actively try to beat Metal Bat. Like, actively, Metal Bat would be a threat to Saitama. Like, a threat as in, like, fighting-wise. Um, and seeing that, to me, would be awesome. Because one, I like I said, my favorite characters are... All, I love all my favorite characters, and all my favorite characters are the greatest no sarcasm there at all um but seeing my favorite characters get stronger and have more relevance within the story is great uh kind of sad toji only really like toji has a lot of relevance within the story a lot but um he's not in the story that much as i thought he was gonna be before i started reading jjk you see this dude you think he's gonna be in a lot he's like in the anime maybe be what four or five episodes well the hidden inventory and then like the fucking the Dagon fight, so like six, seven episodes maybe, and then he's gone. And then he doesn't really reappear in the manga either, so it's like not really too much of uh, too much Toji there as much as I had hoped. But Metal Bat gets a lot of love, so I'm fine with that. Anyway, I see this going down really in two ways. If Metal Bat had a contracted assassination, Toji's wiping easy. Toji's wiping him easy done and here's the thing if toji knows because toji knew gojo's abilities he knew what gojo could do and he was able to wipe out gojo he was able to clear him and the biggest thing with toji was that element of surprise if he had allowed that fight to go on any longer toji would have probably lost but since he had that element of surprise he was he was good he was done he finished the fight, maybe what, that fight was in real lifetime, or in, in their real world time, probably like 20, 30 seconds. He was able to clear him up pretty click, pretty quickly. Now, the thing is with Metal Bat is the longer the fight goes on, the stronger he gets. So, if Toji knows that, Toji has to go. And by the way, Toji isn't, like, the great thing about Toji is he's not, like, against using guns. Like, a gun was a genuine threat still to Ghetto, mind you. And Ghetto, I hate, I love Ghetto's character, love his character, but it is, it's very weird how his mind operates. But anyway, um, Toji takes on Metal Bat. It has to be a one, two, or maybe three shot thing. It cannot be anything more than that. If it has to be Toji walks up or comes up, slices Metal Bat's throat, it's done. Because if it doesn't end in one shot or two shots, Metal Bat's going to get stronger and he's going to eclipse Toji with 
No, there's no doubt. There's no doubt in my mind that Metal Bat could do it. And the second scenario is they meet on the street or something, right? They fight just normally. And to me, if that's the case, then Metal Bat's winning. There, like I said, there's few characters in like JJK overall that I think is are beating Metal Bat like that, even with curse techniques, because you would have to one shot him, and Metal Bat's a tank. He is true to like true to life a tank. This dude took on two monsters and then Garo and was pretty much like he had to go to the hospital. Don't get me wrong, but the dude was in it. Like the dude was in it and kept on being in it. To me, that that's amazing. So I have to say, at least in my personal opinion, that in those two scenarios, it comes down to those two things. I think power scaling is great. I love power scaling, but. I feel like a lot of the time within the communities, a lot of the time, it's the situations that matter. And how do we address these situations? How do we put these situations um, in context? Saying, like, for instance, saying Goku versus Superman is so, like, it's it, it dumbs down the situation because it's like, what's the situation? And who? what Superman are we talking about? What Goku are we talking about? Saying Toji versus metal bat is one thing but it's saying toji is assass uh, is contracted to take on metal bat and toji knows toji has the planning toji's wiping toji's cl he's clearing metal bat and i love metal Bat. i love toji but toji would he would beat him but saying oh if they meet on the street like just straight up match to match they meet on the street then yeah probably metal bat's going to be winning that because Toji isn't, I doubt Toji is going to go for the kill right away. Like, granted, and hell, even if he did, without the planning, Toji was going for the kill on Megumi pretty, like, fast before he even snapped out of it. Like, he was, like, pretty bloodlusted, in my opinion. Megumi was still keeping in there. Like, he was still doing a really good job staying alive and if he can do that i definitely think metal bat can do it so in the even like dagon toji or that uh that i guess shibuya toji like even then i would still say like no metal bat's still winning because toji could be going for the kill but metal bat has to just stay alive that all that's all he has to do because he's going to get stronger with fighting spirit he's going to there is no doubt about it so, at least in my personal opinion, that's who I think would win. I think I think it comes down to context, and I think it comes down to clues. Whenever I do these power scaling vids, I'm never going to be mentioning um, Mach 1 or anything like that, because truth be told, I suck at math. I don't want to do math like that. I hate that. But I do think that sometimes these interesting conversations are needed, sometimes within a community, because it's like, oh, it puts into perspective how strong your character is and how strong, you know, and knowing how strong your character is, when you see your character grow, and eventually, because eventually we'll see Yuji do the same thing, um, and you and you'll see Yuji and multiple other other characters, Maki as well, grow and do the same thing. It's amazing to me because it's like, oh well, they used to be able to fucking punch a planet, uh, punch a mountain in half. Now they're able to lift up a country or something. That to me is great. I love that type of uh, character development. Well, if it's that, not just only if it's that, but I just love that in addition to other character development as well. It's a great little adding piece onto things. I love that. Um, but anyway, uh, that's just been me. This has just been me mainly talking to a camera about my personal opinion on things and about how context matters on power scaling. Um, I want to do another video. I'm going to want to do Garo versus um, Toji. Um, and if not Toji, then Maki. Honestly, at least into my personal opinion, both of them are pretty much capable of the same thing. Um, Toji could have murdered the entire Zenin clan. Um, Maki, Maki did. So, they're both capable of the same thing. Maki went hand-to-hand -hand with Sukuna. Toji could have went hand-to-hand -hand with Sukuna. <clears throat> and Sukuna being top of the verse. There's nobody beating Sukuna right now. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, don't forget, uh, I have Trails videos coming out, and if you don't know what that is, Trails of Cold Steel, uh, I'm a really big fan of Trails of Cold Steel in specific, I've played all, every game after Cold Steel, 
I guess that's not that many. That's only like Reverie and uh, Into Dawn. And I still need to play Into Dawn too, but they haven't fully translated that yet with the fan translation. So, yeah, I played every game after. I played every game after Persona 5. It's not really, there's not too much, Um, I guess, like too many games. Like, what What do you even mean, dude? Um, But yeah, anyway, um, I need to play some more of those games, the previous games, and I will. But uh, I 100% suggest uh, you guys go check out Cold Steel. Go play Trails of Cold Steel fucking masterpiece great games um i want to make some more videos honestly i want to put out some more warhammer videos um uh, i been i got into league for a little bit for a little bit so uh i like the league lore than i like the game fun fact so i want to put out some more league videos about the lore some probably a little bit of context power power scaling and stuff like that um but yeah anyway uh you guys be safe have a good one uh world loves you and everything uh you guys be safe out there and yeah you guys have a good one